Hi, my name is Joe Miller, and since leaving my investment banking role four years ago, I've helped more than 100 students and graduates get internships and jobs in the finance sector. With this sector becoming more and more competitive, e-financial careers has the success rate around 1% now, which is about five times more competitive than Oxford's E&M course, it is more important than ever that students don't make mistakes. So here are the six most common mistakes that I see in my clients. The first mistake people make is that they don't start early enough. The most common candidate that comes to me for help is in their final year of a third year degree or doing a master's. And it's simply more difficult to get those people a job. More and more now, banks are hiring students in their second year via summer internships and also in their first year via spring weeks. In fact, some banks like HSBC are now even offering work placement programs for high school students. It is therefore critical that you get involved early. The second most common mistake that I see is that candidates do not know they, their role. They'll come to me and say that they want to be an investment banker, or they want to be a trader, or they even want to be a consultant, but they don't know where they would fit into that organization. The HR teams that are reviewing your application want to know the desk you're going to sit on, the team you're going to be working in, and the location you're going to be working. So a better answer is, I'm Joe and I want to work on the TMT desk in London, advising companies on M&A deals. The third most common mistakes that I see amongst candidates is that they don't leverage the networks available to them. In my first year at university, I had JP Morgan offering smoothies on campus, companies like Goldman Sachs uh, hosting networking events, and companies like Bank of America hosting case studies. The reason firms invest in these is so that they can scout the best candidates. Therefore, it is critical that you make the most of them. Think about it this, this way. At most, each top investment bank is going to hire a handful of candidates from one university. The likelihood is those candidates were part of the finance society, were involved in the business guild, were part of some sort of initiative on campus at university. Get involved. The fourth most common mistake that I see is with the cover letter. So many clients of mine want to prioritize volume over quality. I have people come to me and say, Joe, I've submitted 40 applications to different companies and I've not had an interview yet. And the chances are you are churning out the same cover letter to every firm. Stop, do your research, interact with the firm, and tailor every cover letter to that company. For example, a great way to start your cover letter is to say, hi, my name's Joe, and I'm currently in my third year of an economics degree at LSE. My first interaction with your company was at this networking event where I spoke to this employee about this. It makes your interest so much more real. The fifth most common mistake that I see, especially in the best candidates, is when it comes to the interview. Lots and lots of students focus on the content of their answers without thinking about their nonverbal communication. They, for example, focus on how to recite a DCF model, how to introduce themselves, how to say their elevator pitch perfectly in two minutes. What they don't do is remember to smile. Remember to keep eye contact. Remember that actually banking, finance is a relationships business. And the type of candidates that are successful light up a room when they walk into it. I always tell all of my clients as a quick exercise to look up Albert Morabian, the American psychologist, whose communication model is really effective for this. In fact, some of his research suggests 93% of our communication is nonverbal. It's really, really important that you practice stepping outside your comfort zone and, and communicating in a more enthusiastic way. The sixth and final common mistake that I see amongst candidates for finance jobs specifically is when it comes to the technical questions. I often find that students either cluster around one of two extremes. On one hand, they either dedicate all their time 
to reciting technicals, to learning how to walk through a DCF model. What is WAC? You know, how do I walk, walk you through an LBO model? Or on the other extreme, students say to themselves, I'm not a finance student. I therefore don't need to know that. And they don't learn the technicals enough. The truth is you need to find some middle ground. Students from finance backgrounds probably know enough technical, technical answers to do well in the interview. And so a better, a better use of their time is instead focusing on the competency, motivational, situational and awareness parts of the interview. On the other hand, if you're a history graduate and you know nothing about banking technicals, then you are naive to think that you can waltz your way through an assessment center without learning these basics. Find a middle ground, allocate your time effectively. Thank you for watching this short video. I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in working with myself or any of my colleagues here at the Profs, please do get in touch via the description below. If you also found this or any of our other videos useful, please do like and subscribe. Good luck.